Now, hello everybody. <laughs> My name is David Justin. Um, I'm a PhD student here at USC, and today I'll be talking about alpha robust classification trees, which is work done in collaboration with Samantha Jay, Andres Gomez, and Phoebe Bionics. So we've heard a few talks um, from CPIOR about classification trees, but just to give you a review, uh, classification trees are a branching set of tests based off of the attributes of given data samples. Then after some series of tests, you assign a particular label to each sample. And so classification trees are a popular machine learning method largely due to their, their interpretability, which is necessary in many POM domains. However, within many domains, machine learning models, including classification trees, are subject to a distribution shift. This is when the distribution of the training and the testing data are different. <coughs> and so this can occur for a lot of different reasons. Um, one example is that perhaps there's a difference in how you collect the data in the training and testing phases. So perhaps you change a question slightly from the training phase to the testing phase, Perhaps um, there's a dynamic environment, et cetera. <laughs> and this can result in a distribution shift. But no matter what your source of distribution shift may be, this can cause poor performance in your deployment or testing phases. So to tackle this distribution shift is issue, we propose to use robust optimization, which is a modeling paradigm and a set of computationally efficient methods that will return solutions in nice to uncertainty. The nice thing about robust optimization is that it addresses this distribution shift problem without having to know what the actual distribution shift is. And it performs well, even if the distribution of our testing set is different than what we anticipate. So with all these in mind, we developed an MIP-based formulation for optimal robust classification trees. So this is more mathematically, this is our formulation. So you wanna choose some classification tree pi um, with some maximum depth D that maximizes the training accuracy, um, which I use a number of terrifically classified training samples in the worst case uh, distribution shift, which we will model here as a perturbation of our data. So um, to describe this objective function more, a little bit more clearly, say we have some data sample XI, and then we perturb it by some um, so a perturbation C, and then we run through our tree pi, and we see what the predicted value is, and then we um, see if it equals the um, true label of that, um, of that sample. And so therefore, the sum counts the number of correctly classified samples. So let's walk through this formulation step by step. So to decide this tree structure, um, we want to keep track of the branching set of tests and the labels that are assigned. And so we'll collect these um, through um, these binary decision variables, B and W respectively. And so we can describe our decision tree through these decision variables. So now the next bit of our formulation is our um, uncertainty. And so we define our um, perturbation um, through an uncertainty set. Um, this uncertainty set, uh, we define by a cost and budget framework where we define a cost per unit perturb for each data sample and each feature. And then we find a total cost of perturbation and we restrict that by a total budget epsilon. And so this gives us a range of what possible perturbations there may be. So you can tune this um, cost per unit perturbation and this budget based off of whatever um, domain knowledge you may have. And in our paper, we have a method to calibrate this um, more exactly, um, but I will leave the details for the paper. So now that we um, have our define our maximization and minimization problem, now let's talk about um, the um, objective function itself. So looking at this objective function, you can see that it's nonlinear and discontinuous and it's a bit messy. So putting this into an MIP as is may be pretty difficult. So to tackle this issue, we use a method that transforms the problem of counting the number of correctly classified samples as a maximum flow problem. So in order to set this maximum flow problem, let's start with a graph that resembles a classification tree structure. Then let's add a source node to the root, and then let's add a sync node to all of the leaves where we would assign a label. Then making this directed graph, we now have a graph where we can um, impose a maximum flow problem on. So we say that each data sample induces a graph on this directed graph, and then at, um, and we include the arcs um, such that the data sample flows down to the leaves. And then we only add a arc to the sink if we correctly classify that sample. And so therefore, in short, uh, we 
correlate a, a correct classification to a maximum flow of one into this graph. And so this idea um, has uh, already been used in the non-robust tree case um, in uh, Sina Gai's, uh, Gomez and Mayanis' paper. But of course, in our setting, we have this um, issue where we have this distribution shift that may shift how your data sample flows down the tree and which may lead to an incorrect classification. So now going back to this problem that um, I've been referring to this whole time, let's take this problem and now we introduce this maximum flow graph. And so we can turn this problem into a maximum flow problem. And so this maximum flow problem will count the number of correctly classified samples for us. So the advantage of this formulation as opposed to the previous one is that we now have a linear objective and constraints. However, we can see that we have now have this maximization problem that we have to deal with inside this uh, max in problem. So now let's turn this problem into something that we can solve. And to do this, let's dualize this inner maximization problem. And as we may know, the dual of the maximum flow problem is a minimum cut problem. So let's go to our dual formulation. Our dual formulation will have the same outer max min problem. However, this time we will have a minimum cut problem within that inner minimization since we dualize that maximum flow problem into a minimum cut problem. Note here that strong duality does hold. Um, between the maximum flow and minimum cut problems. And so therefore this formulation is equivalent to our um, previous formulation. Another thing that you can notice about this formulation is that there's some inherent decomposal structure. And so we can create a tailored boundaries composition algorithm um, that, um, that can solve this problem to optimality. So this is what the algorithm will look like. In our main problem, we'll decide which the tree structure and that will decide which features to put on and which labels to predict. Then we, in our sub problem, we find a worst case perturbation and a set of minimum cuts that we can add as violated constraints back into our master problem. And then we reiterate and, until we solve optimality. And so this, this algorithm can be implemented within existing off the shelf MIP solvers. So to, um, to conclude, just a few experimental results. Um, to assess the effectiveness of robustness, we train a non robust optimal tree and a robust optimal tree. Um, with various data sets, uncertainty sets, and tree depths. Um, we derive a worst case test accuracy from a held out test set um, that we perturbed in a lot of different ways um, according to some probability distribution. So the vertical axis um, of this graph is the gain in worst case accuracy from using a robust tree versus a non-robust tree. And this horizontal axis here um, corresponds to how large our uncertainty set is, where moving right corresponds to a smaller uncertainty set. Uh, for each pair of plots, the blue plot is where we have an expected perturbation, which means that um, we knew what the perturbation may look like in um, the testing phase, and so we were able to incorporate that into our uncertainty model. And in the green is where we have a different, um, where we have an unexpected perturbation. So overall, we can see that in general, um, we perform better in the robust case than the non-robust case in terms of worst case accuracy. And even when we misspecify the uncertainty a little bit, we still have a favorable performance um, with our model. So with that, thank you very much for listening. Again, I acknowledge my collaborator, Sina Andres Abibi, and we are currently working on the journal version of this paper. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thanks for the nice talk. Um, you mentioned the, the worst case accuracy now. Um, how does it compare to Let's say average accuracy, yeah. so the default decision trees you would get. Yeah, yeah, good question. So I didn't have a graph on my slides here, but in the average case, we also um, perform we perform pretty well. We don't have as high of a gain as we do in the worst case scenario, but um, we did show in our experiments that we indeed do have a a favorable gain in average case as well. So there's a question from the zoo. What if you're what if you use a classic one-stage bus version instead of a two-stage bus? That is, all permutations of one data point have to remain in the same path of the tree. Do you think that it's too robust? Yeah, so there, so it will lead to a more over-conservative solution um, because in in your uh, in a scenario that you really care about, you care about the fact that after you perturb the data, where does the point land? And if a sing in a single-stage version of this problem, you um, don't you're not able to capture that kind of information. And so you end up having an over-conservative solution. All right.